All right, we are back for the fourth and final part. Again, it's been such a long time. I, I know. You know, it's so great to be back in the room with and you we both. we closed the curtains for you? Like, we clo- <laughs> is that a new shirt? <laughs> yeah. It actually is. Um, so this is the, the, the final part, fourth part in our Indeed. series, The Truth Behind the American Idol. Um, with the Lee truth yep. behind American <laughs> Idol. He does say that. We way. should get Ryan, Ryan to We should get Ryan Seacrest to do that. But... Um, <clears throat> So, you know, this uh, takes us up to live shows, right? Yeah. Um, and so we, um, let's jump right into it. We, we left Hawaii, came home. Um, we, we worked on some more stuff and worked on, you, you continue to work on songs and promos if, and everything else. If the world was ending was my, that, I mean, that was my favorite song at, the mo- at that moment. And I mean, one of them. And I've been preparing that, which is funny because I, funny, not funny that I'd been preparing that song and then without even realizing it before the pandemic hit. Yep. Um, but, but that was, yeah, that was interesting, but sorry, go on. How no, we, it? we, yeah. uh, I know that the weird connection there, right? The, um, you know, so, so you go back out to LA. So we, you, you come home, you're home for a couple of weeks. Um, you, you head back out to LA that, that, and it turned out it was a top 21 because, um, I, and I actually had a problem with that. Um, just in terms yeah. of what what happened with um, Lauren and Grace Lear, um, that that they didn't choose and they made it a top twenty one. This is my criticism of the show, and this is the first time I really felt like they were manufacturing. It's like, for God's sakes, make a decision. And my problem wasn't so much that it was between Lauren and Grace, um, but I really felt that there were other folks who uh, had made it through to the top twenty twenty one. That shouldn't be there. Um, and Personal preferences per, aside. To, totally. But, but, but for me, like, I had a real problem with that because like, Lauren and Grace are both, they should have just been top 20. I mean, they should have they're, they're both incredible. been through. They were both incredible. Um, and, and anyone can make their own judgments. And lovely, lovely women as well. I, I, yeah. Just, but, you know, it, may, it, it, just start, it's, it starts to reveal itself. Like some of this manufactured drama starts to reveal itself. But again, it's a TV show, so it it just sort of is what it is. Um, and we knew that, and we did. We so that. you go out to LA, and and this is when we get hot and heavy with legal, right? So yeah. contracts, lawyers, all that. Not fun to stuff. mention names, but Chris Townsend, oh, absolute bellend. Yeah. In your opinion, <laughs> please don't edit that out. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion, yeah. in your opinion, in my hum- ni- yeah. it would, it, I would share that opinion that there there were certain there nineteen was, media. I love yeah, you though. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to invoke Fremantle, our, I love our, you. our Fifth Amendment rights on that one. <laughs> yeah, um, Chris. I I think yeah I think I think this is you know there's a, a side of this business. This is Everyone, when it gets real. Yep. look. All jokes aside, Chris. Like aside, that's just a joke. Everyone has a job to do. This right. is a yeah. music. This is the music industry. This is the music business. You know, everyone was um, professional and they were all good at their jobs. Yep. So they were all actually really good. And, really good. And you're negotiating. So you can't really like, obviously we're joking, but no, re- all real, um, realistic. But it, do, yeah. it does become real. The business side becomes a big, big part of of the live shows. I mean, it's... Because you need to get these contracts signed. Um, because and that's how it is for... Funny. That's how it is for us now, musicians, um, as, as an artist trying to make it. I mean, that's just the world. But sorry, sorry to interrupt. But I think the important point there is that we did our level best to get you ready for that negotiation, right? And yeah. along with the other artists. And we and myself and Glenn, and there was a couple of the other managers that played a big part in that negotiation process. Massive. Um, in, in trying to get the very best that we could. Um, and eventually we did. We really felt like... All sides eventually came together. It was a difficult negotiation. But in the middle of all that, COVID hits. And that changed the dynamic of everything. Yeah. Um, including those contract negotiations. And, and you know, without getting into specifics, because I don't think it's necessary, but I think it was to our advantage just in that process what, what had happened. They, they had, had sent everyone home. It was unprecedented. Yeah, it and was. from a contractual standpoint... You know, there can be insurance written into an agreement. However, this had never happened before. So to your point, we were absolutely, uh, it was a little to our advantage, you know, than than if it had been just normal circumstances. Exactly. So so we we did our best. 
the other side did their best and yeah. eventually we came to business. an agreement yep we came to an agreement which is what you have to realize and and some of the contestants i think had some difficulty through that process because they just they didn't have what you had and what some of the other you know contestants who were represented had um, they had advisors behind them that knew this business and said look this this is normal what you're hearing what you're saying yeah. this is all normal like it's their job to give as little as possible away. It's our job to get as much as we can. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But that's especially a lot given of time. given with given with the um, the platform that Idol are giving you, the audience that they're giving you. You know, contractually, it's going to be more for them to take, and it's your. You know, you're going to be the one getting less, yeah. which is understandable with what they give you. So, COVID hits. Yeah. They send everybody home. Yeah, I mean, every day it was getting worse and worse, and and Patrick was like, "We're not shutting down production," you know, um, and all these other shows in CBS Studios were shutting down one by one. They were all there in separate rooms in us because we all had this kind of holding meeting room, which was awesome, where we all just hung out. And yeah, I mean, each day, I mean, I remember the day PA closed and the, the state of, of Pennsylvania closed, and I was hopping on the phone with you, and I was hopping on the phone with my dad and my mom, and like, what's happening? I didn't. Like, and we, this is when COVID was starting to actually be, I mean, it was, it, that's when it kind of became more real. And we started to all kind of fear for each other in a sense. I mean, it was, the world was going into a panic and, um, and yeah, but they kept saying, you know, I mean, we, we'd all been put up in apartments that we were sharing together. Francisco was my roommate and we kept saying production wasn't closing. And then day by day, more and more States began to close. And then it came to, they had to say just, pulled us all into a room and said guys and gals we have to send you home we don't know what's going to happen going forward with the show you know um we're going to try to figure it out as best we can but here are your plane tickets here's your flight info and i'll see you later hopefully stand by <laughs> stand by yeah yep. and it and it was it was about two weeks the longest two weeks i think yep. we didn't know what was going on yeah now my and, it, and it, it, through that whole time we were still negotiating contracts I that know. didn't stop right so um so what we had speculated was one of two things was going to happen. And I was certain that the show was going to continue. I was 100% certain that the show was going to continue because they had, they had taken you that far and, and wasn't sure in what format. It would clearly be from home, but like how would they do that? Um, but I was certain because if you looked at the timeline of Idol, um, auditions for the show start up in that June, July time frame of every year. So, yeah. you know, that every year that the show's been done, they had already started to ramp up to do the, get the auditions going. Um, and, yeah. um, and so if it was going to continue, it was just, I, what I predicted was going to come true, came true. They shortened the season, right? Yeah. So we lost two full weeks, which means we lost, I think, three or four shows, um, you know, in between. Um, you know, but we're but we were happy that the show was going to continue because they could have just scrapped everything and said, forget it. But, you know, it's TV. There's advertising dollars involved. There's other things involved that contractually that have to happen. And so we, we were pretty confident the show was going to go on. We just I, didn't know. how. I think you were. I had no idea what was going on. I mean, everyone was in limbo. And that this is just a prime example of how just utterly fantastic each and every individual, each and every person is on the production side um, because they truly found a way. I mean, every other show, essentially, that was go that was on television shut down and Idol were one of the only shows to keep going they, and as quick as, and to, to pick up as quick as they did. They were the first show that came up with the, the format of doing something remote. And they locked in on that and weren't going to back away from it. Which when you really think about it, I mean, we, but like, but they, because they were the ones that came up with the ideas and, and everything and plan out, plan out the format. We're making television history, which is yeah. quite an incredible thing to be a part of. Obviously, a lot of us were disappointed, but, you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic, you know, like. Unprecedented. Like everyone's disappointed you know everyone's lives are being completely like like taken aside and not taken aside but i mean everyone's on, yeah, every, everyone's being yeah. put on hold and you know i mean the fact that 
the production team were able to find a way to keep going. I mean, that was just such an amazing thing. And you had to find the silver lining in that. You really did. And I don't want to foreshadow, but I think that opportunity, because again, I see it, and I think Cliff and you most likely will agree, is that that was an opportunity because not only, and I've said this to you before, you know, most people start their, their career in music and they, they have to like climb and dig and pull and, you know, grit it out. And you started to do that. And then all of a sudden, you know, here comes American Idol and you're fast tracking. And then, oh, by the way, when you get to the end of that process, we're going to have you do all the grit and the work and the climbing up by being a producer, being a set designer, being, you know, basically self-producing with the help of the show, which I thought was unbelievable yeah. and valuable experience. Well, what was interesting about it for uh, as as they decided to do the at home so now it's just figuring out what um you know what we needed to do and essentially what we needed to do was everything everything <laughs> literally literally everything. i mean they Audio, were at help video, as much design. as they possibly oh, yeah. could but remotely the of amount yeah. of work that yeah. we more so you and and glenn but like more, really. more so more so you i mean you took on everything Luckily, you are an extremely, insanely well-versed <laughs> individual in who's everything. had a career at everything, or like <laughs> right. a like a maven, if that's the correct terminology. He's MacGyver. Yeah. Well, it it definitely taxed everything I had ever learned about everything. So it it was interesting. But yeah, we we had to do sound design, set design, video design, camera angles, running multiple cameras, wardrobe. running lighting systems, wardrobe, everything, and ev so what what would have been interesting in LA just in terms of you being on the show in LA you were surrounded by a team of absolute unequivocal professionals yeah. that would handle it at a snap and none of that was your job all, yeah uh, right all you had to worry about was delivering a performance That's and it. that was absolutely it and yeah I mean now we were literally you're talking about waiting for hours just you're waiting for an hour and a half in one place while standing up while the cameras are getting lined up and you're having to go back and forth with the director who's awesome he's actually um phil, a Brit. Yeah. Phil, yeah phil hayes yep. um and i mean everyone like i mean yep. dan like i mean well, it was kind of it was kind of fun just no, it being was definitely with, chatting fun. with all of them it, I mean, was, it was awesome you but had access to these professionals that you probably would have never yeah, talked justin to yeah, yeah justin mean, and I remember saying to you at one point, and, and I think I had actually said it, um, you know, to Jensen, I had said, this this whole setup must be killing you guys because you can see what we're doing, but you can't help. You yeah. can direct us yeah. over yeah. a phone or over, we did a lot of Zoom calls. We did like, oh, that's a, and over video, or like whatever, but you can't physically, so they're telling me, move the camera an inch in that direction, go change the light over there, change this, and and there were there were times when things broke right in the middle or right in between takes and they break and we've got to do it all over again or fix what and, and yeah. I've got to fix it. Like yeah. the, the time we blew up yeah. the lights. And right? it's like and it's the most tedious thing for them as professionals who could just be like <laughs> they're dying. It's, it's just it's like just human nature for them. Yep. And it's like their second language and they're having to walk through. I mean, and, and we I was so I mean, again. I can't reiterate how lucky and fortunate enough I am to have my family, but and also to have you both, um, because that wouldn't have happened with you and so many other contestants. I mean, they had their Jensen and and all, all the production and the directors were having to walk through parents who have never touched a camera and have just learned and how to using, take selfies. And they're using encoders and right. audio equipment and all I that. I mean, that must have been... I mean, it was such hard work and so hard so to pull off, but they managed to do it. I think we should point out that, in reality, what we're talking about is three iPhones, an encoder which would basically take the recordings and broadcast them to... They went to Kansas City. To Kansas City, yeah. which then so sent it to L.A., a, yeah. Um, a couple of microphones, and then they would send stuff for props. And, and let's be honest, you would basically build whatever it took. Yeah, everything that you saw on TV for Louis, I built. L so if you the need a really good set designer, I helped a little bit. Yeah. And I you were a pain there. in the ass sometimes. You like, got the food. It was a lot, and lunch. a lot of times it was a lot easier for me just to do what I needed to do by myself. 
um, and get well, it done. Not that you didn't volunteer, but you needed to also just concentrate yeah. on I was, your yeah. performance. I mean, I was like, I was trying to be in a good mental headspace. I was also, I mean, this was the time where my mono started getting really yeah. bad. And yeah. in hindsight, again, I recently got blood work done and I just found out that I had mono a few months ago. And I had no idea. You were sick that every I had day. It. I was sick the entire every time. Day. I remember during the live shows, I, which is where my muscular damage in my throat really started. I mean, I'm working through that right now, as I said in the last episode. But I mean, this was, and we were, I was going back and forth with the doctors. You were taking me, we were driving in and out of my doctor's office. I was on steroids for about a month. You got a COVID test? I got COVID test. And I mean, I was just, which you didn't have. Which I, I did not but have But we didn't COVID. know what you had. Like, there was something wrong. There was just, there was not, we couldn't figure it out. I was on steroids, and then I ended up getting a bad reaction from the steroids, and just, and having to sing every day, you know? I mean, everyone was, like, the vocal coaches, and everyone was like, just rest your voice as much as you can, you know? But in reality, I, I couldn't really, you know, because I had a performance to give. We had rehearsals to do, shots to line up. Um, so, I mean, I had to, and that's kind of, yeah, I mean... Yep. And this is where, you know, so in, in the midst of contract negotiations, we're doing... Which were an absolute bloody nightmare, uh, yeah, they, they, part yeah, of my friend. <laughs> yeah, they were a challenge, um, the, as they should be, by Gar- the way. Gary, yeah, it's um, Gary never, did a good job. Yeah. Um, the, good. The, um, the production, the set design, lighting, all, all the production, all this other. But then you had, and I want to kind of go back to what we talked about in the last episode, which was the vocal coaching. So you had changed vocal coaches. So in Hawaii, I had, I mean, my vocal coaches in Hawaii were, were lovely, and I just didn't connect with them emotionally, which is something for me that is just, I need to connect with someone quite deeply just to kind of, to, to start, I, I like to really build a really good relationship with people, and um, especially if we're in a working environment, and you know, I did have a relationship with, with my vocal coaches, but it just wasn't it wasn't necessarily the best fit for me, I think. And I remember in Hawaii, I met Nick. Nick Cooper. I met, I met Nick Cooper, and he was just... I, lo- I, I saw him, and, and I was sitting with... I forget who I was sitting with. It, it, it was probably... I think it was Sam. And, and he came and stopped over to talk to Sam because she had him as her vo- as, as her vocal coach and it's Nick and Justin by the way Justin um Justin oh, damn it but Justin's amazing he's oh, it's going to come to me in a second but Nick Nick and Justin were the vocal coach team and Justin Avery Avery hey. yeah. Justin yeah. Avery Bingo. And, and you know what those are my absolute really dudes and I yeah. still keep in touch with them um, crying to nation team, baby, is kind of what we were. That's what we called right. ourselves. But I, I, this is again behind the scenes what you don't see. But I was hoping to. Sorry, I was hoping to to like. I was like, oh, I wish I could work with Nick. Like seeing how he interacted with Sam, I was like, this looks like the guy that I would really like connect yeah. with. And then luckily, when we got to LA, I actually got word that I got switched to him, and I hadn't said anything about it, so I was really happy about that. Yep. That's great. Behind the scenes. Yeah. I, I think what uh, you know what you don't see on TV is the the influence of the vocal coaches. So you were yeah. dealing with you, you're you're singing. You were really struggling. Like we, it didn't. I mean, it might have showed a little bit on TV, you know, because again, you lost some of that dynamic element to your voice. But if you go back and watch the shows between your Washington DC performance, which was in October, through your your finale performances or your your live show performance, they weren't really, really live, but um, they were recorded. Um, but you know those, you know those week, you really see a difference in your voice, and you were really struggling. And even like we would talk about it every day. You're like my voice, my voice, my voice. And Nick, I think, did as good. He was he, at one point. You were like planking, right? Oh yeah, like, no, no. I, I, I was there that for was that. to really open my diaphragm and to make it so I wasn't really having to reach so much for the notes. I mean, Nick. He. And Justin, I mean, and I still like in the studio, I, I was working in the studio yesterday recording vocals and I'm just like, I remember Nick in my head saying, um, and Paul has always done this too, but just having the reiteration from more people that I truly look up to and respect as well, um, who is really successful and a great in the industry, Nick just says, make every single word believable, you're telling a story and, you know, make every single word felt and, 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 and that's what I do now. I mean, I'm so grateful to have worked with such amazing, 
amazing people. Well, I think where I was going with this was through all of your physical pain with your singing in your throat, they they found a way to make it work. Like that's the amazing thing. Yeah, that's how good they are. They're incredible. So there was when you were doing, you've got a friend yeah. with them. You were I was, holding the laptop. You know, I was literally holding so they could the see Zoom call. Yeah. The the exchange was unbelievable, and that was when he had you do planks. Yeah. And every line that Louis sang, you would hear him say, "Who are you gonna be there for? What are you gonna do?" I mean, and it was. Like and that's what Paul was telling me for yeah. a year before. Yeah, it's yeah. so funny. So it yeah, you did go through that exercise, and and there were other moments that were really interesting. And we don't. Uh, it's it, I only it's, really want to talk about yeah, one I mean, of the performances, but but one of the interesting things again, stuff that people don't know happened. Like um, we were being really careful about my presence and Glenn's presence in the background because we they weren't showing us right. Yeah. Um. It was and they and for for an obvious reason because yeah. COVID was scaring the crap out of everybody oh, right. but I basically oh. lived with you I basically lived with you talking about my haircut I'm talking about your haircut <laughs> I am talking about your haircut you know Damn it. so we were together and got I tested. lied on television yeah. I lied on television you did lie on television and you know and so you had come up to my, my wife does your hair my wife yeah, is a stylist she's an incredible she, she, Gina Jakevich. Yep. Has she got? She has she got. She a hasn't taken my last name. Yet. Yeah, she, I'm working on that. Good. That's a, that's a whole other podcast. Gina, um, Gina is an incredible woman, and she's Gina a fantastic. Yep. She's a fantastic hairstylist, and I'm lucky that she does my hair. Yep. And yeah, we've been quarantined together. So I went. Um, she came around for. You know, that's another lie. That's I lie. came you here. Came here. <laughs> I came here yeah. to. I'm not a lie. I'm genuinely an incredibly open person. <laughs> I'm we crumbling, what, I'm we crumbling. did what we had to do. Yeah. I had to get a haircut. My hair, I looked like an absolute slob. Um, so I had to get a haircut. And, you know, Ryan, and I was so thrown off by this. Ryan says to me, oh, like, we we, we love your hair. Like, did you just get that done or something? I, I forget yeah. exactly what he said. But I was like, and I looked to, to my bed. You couldn't really see it. But I looked, if you go back, I looked to my bedroom door. And Cliff is out there. And I'm just, and he hasn't even heard what I was, what no, I was. No, because you only you can hear the judges. Only I can hear through my in-ear monitors. Yep. And he, had, but I look over and I'm just like, oh, like my brother and sister did it, like, <laughs> yep. yeah. yeah. But 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 I do want to say, I think a lot of people called bullshit. Yeah. Part yeah. of my French again. But but on a, on a more serious note, and then we can get back. Um, during this time, we were very vigilant in getting tested. Oh, yeah. um, the time we spent together. We did not allow outside people into your home. And thank you to your mother for I mean, forcing that. Yeah, your mom was pretty strict. Because well, I mean, my sister has diabetes and, and right. um, my, I mean, my, it's, my parents are at risk. So my, like a bunch of people in my family are at risk. I'm at risk. I have asthma. So, I mean, it was okay because we'd all been tested. We've there been was, together since There July. was no yeah, other way to the do the live shows yeah. without you both being present yeah. and, kind of, and, and, and Cliff kind of building all the sets. Not and, kind of. Not and kind of. He built kind of building, building every single, putting every single light up. I mean, it was just incredible. And your family had just stayed in the house. So, I mean, I, we, di we, we didn't go outside apart yeah. from my front porch. But it was the appearance that you that you were had that we didn't yeah. want to deal with. We didn't want to deal with the question and, and people. No, and really idol and uh, idol that. couldn't risk that. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. this is their reputation. This yeah. is like, no. So, so we, we went through all that and, and the, you know, you, you make, you make it through the top 20, you know, you make it in the top 10. That was a big cut. They're, they're cutting massive, uh, you know, essentially Acceler you, you had the Lauren and grace thing where the people voted and grace made it through and, and Lauren Massetti didn't. Yeah. Um, and that which, was all I could have ever hoped for, to reach top 10. I mean, yep. that was our plan. Our I plan mean, was to reach top 10. I mean, our, every round I didn't expect to get through. Um, every round up to that, like, I mean, every round was a complete shock and I was crumbling with anxiety. But then, I mean, it's like my, I would have been just so, like my top goal that I could have reached was being able to be in the top 10. And I remember... My my best friend Jared drove by after I just after I'd got the news and I just started crying as I was hugging him because I was like I can't believe this is happening like yep. it was just such an incredible moment um w when I had got that news about me going into well, the top ten and, that and was thank you everyone that voted really yep. um, the expectation I mean you preset months the expectation because we talked about it yep. you're like do I want to do this and Cliff was like well yeah but we don't want you to win. 
Yeah, we, ne- we never wanted you to win. Never. I mean, and that was a constant theme with Glenn and I. We're like, we actually don't want you to win. You know, the history of the show, let's just call it what it is. Like, people that don't win tend to do better in the long run than people so that do. So, a lot do. to prove, though, knock yeah, on wood. Of course. Well, everyone always, again, it's right. always up to the yeah. artist. Like, you got to write good music. you got to perform well. you got to make a connection with your audience. But, um, but that was never our goal because I, I always felt like that for two reasons. First off, the history of the show. But secondly... If you set that standard, like if I if I don't win, I have failed. We never wanted to set that as a standard. That's the reason why we kept telling you we don't want you to win because yeah. making top ten and the whole idea was to get to the live shows because that was yeah. what was supposed to happen. Um, and and you can sing more originals at that point and really connect with the audience, which is the big regret on what, in, in what happened with and not the show's fault with COVID. Yeah, with that COVID, was the biggest. It yanked out your opportunity to sing originals. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, throughout the entire process, I mean, that was the entire reason why I decided to, I mean, Idol was, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for anyone. It really is. But the really big reason I decided to go um, to actually audition was because I was able to perform my original music. And, I mean, that's, my, that's what I do. That is, I'm so fortunate enough to have that as my outlet to be able to write songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I mean... That's what I. That's that's who I am. That's who I am. That's, there's no other way to put it. And that was kind of what my entire goal on the show was to be able to do. And you know that was taken away in the live shows. Um, but it was just something that you know we were all in unprecedented um, in an unprecedented situation. And you know we had to just adjust and try to make the best of it. We did, and it's and you know we didn't. Um, disagree with that decision because when you understand it is I mean, television. I was, I was pissed a little well, bit at first, but then I well, came around and was like, they're doing the best they can. Right. It, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a personal thing because it, it yeah. affects you personally. Yeah. And, and to your point, we really felt like, you know, you singing other people's songs, it's part of the show, but your original songs showcase you. And if yeah. the audience accepted you for your original songs, then we've done we've done good. And if they didn't, we know we need to done go back well. and, and sorry. yeah, sorry, done well. That's my mom. Yeah, I know. Um, and, and if you didn't, then we knew we had stuff to work on, but it was always you. It was always on you. Singing yeah. someone else's song isn't always on you. Like, yeah, people have to it's also definitely, connect I mean, song. my artistry is who I am. That's what we've been working so hard towards. Um, just kind of building, building my, um, my craft as a songwriter. And that's, I mean, as I said, that's who I am. And I was very disappointed. I mean, I was rehearsing London, my, which I will be releasing soon, everyone. But I was rehearsing my original song, London, which is unreleased, with the vocal coaches. And, you know, I was so set on doing that for the top 10 performance. And then I got news that I wasn't going to be allowed yeah. to, which was quite... It was quite, disappointing. Quite disappointing. Yeah. But, but you know, under, we understood the We reason did understand it. it. So just the, the two things I want to add to that is, one, I think when you talk about having that opportunity to do the original song, out of the gate, you came out with an original song that hit everybody uh in a really good and emotional way so it was it i mean that preset an expectation that oh my god this kid's first song on the show is an original where is he going to go from there and you never got a chance to never got a chance yeah. to. Yep. yep so um and i do want to just say one more thing and I, I know we're coming up on the time that you say that it's better to do your own stuff than someone else's um i think the 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 version of Ain't No Mountain mm-hmm. that you did is very similar to what Adele did with Bob Dylan's To Make You Feel My Love. Thank you. you. took ownership of it. Thank you. So, but again, your original stuff, I mean, you threw the gauntlet down day one and I thought that that was, that helped considering what we didn't know was going to happen going mm-hmm. forward. So we're going to fast forward a little bit. You may get uh, top 20 to top 10. Top ten to top seven. Yeah. The next cut after that is going to a top five, and so that performance was um, the the Disney performance and your Mother's Day performance. Yeah. Right. And so, um, what I want to talk about now is there was a pretty big controversy what that happened when you did "Can You Feel the Love," and um, you had a lot of vocal coaching on that song, yeah. a lot of input, and, and that we agreed with, by the way. Um, in terms of how you're going to sing the song and the arrangement, it's not an easy song to sing. Yeah, um, I mean, I I definitely do think. Again, it's always on the artist. Um, 
but people were telling me, I mean, I was singing it very emotionally and powerfully, and then people in my corner you know the producers the um the producers and 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 um the band director who's amazing um he really is and he's a wonderful guy um chris pooley they were telling me to kind of brighten up a bit this isn't another louis sad song you know this is a disney night which made so much sense it did um this is disney night and you know be a bit happy you're singing a really happy beautiful song don't make it so like you know, like heart wrenching, sad Louis music. Which, <laughs> if you want to check me out on Spotify, that is the vibe. Yeah, not all of it, but yeah. But so you you're getting that influence, and they have no reason they want the best for you. Which Luke you, ended said. up saying like the complete opposite, which was a little bit. It it well, was yeah. the ball buster. So, so that's where I want to go with this. I want to go to the feedback. So you you get judged, and and it's not it's not, you know, when we we had listened to it, it's you know. Um, it was challenging. It was definitely yeah. challenging. Um, and, and, you know, what, what I really want to talk about is what Katie said when she was yeah. judging Francisco. So it was, yeah, it, that was, was... it was actually your judging in Katie and Luke. Luke was a little, let's say, reserved in his judgment. It wasn't terrible, but it he, wasn't He great. didn't get the chill bumps. Yeah, he didn't get the chill bumps, right? Yeah. But Katie's was fairly positive. Lionel's was fairly positive, too. And, and Katie, to the point of saying, you know, Actually, that was the, that was a very good performance, right? Yeah. Then we get to her, to Katie judging Francisco's Disney song. And well, they did say that they wished it was more dynamic. Uh, yes, but it it wasn't it wasn't like that was the forefront of their criticism. Yeah. It was like, oh, by the way, could have been a little more dynamic, and 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 so did and Lionel said that. You know, yeah. but, you know, also saying, look, you're singing to nobody, which is true. When you're just singing, you sang to me. And your parents, in in yeah, in front was, of your pool. The fact that that even night. happened was and your and your neighbor was a bit of a pain in the ass for for that too. <laughs> so there was a lot She's of she's lovely stuff. though. Yeah, Get off whatever. of my no, lawn. We don't know who it is. We're not giving any names right. out here. So but or what who it was. But like there was all this stuff going on in the background, and this is what you're yeah. dealing with. So, yeah. Um. But you know, Katie, you know, basically says to Francisco. Um, and I, I wrote the quote down. It says, you know, what you gave us in the end is what I wanted from Louis Knight. That really pissed me off because like you can you can criticize someone and their performance. I thought you love me, Katie. Yeah, right? well, there's there's that. But you can criticize someone in their performance and say it to their face. You like it. You don't like it. Whatever. And, yeah. and, and they've been, they had been really honest up to that point. This is the only time that that Katie actually made me angry as a judge because I thought it was a disservice to throw you that kind of shade. If she had that... Which I don't think has ever been done really on the it show It had before. never been They'd done. They never really They'd compared two people like that. Not really like that. that. Not, in this, not in that yeah, sense. That was, yeah. that, that was not... It was uncalled for. That was not called... Yeah. But you know, it was I'm, not I'm, cool. I'm not mad. I'm not, no, no, I can't we, complain. It's not about being mad, but in the in the moment, it's like if you're going to have... Hurt. If, it definitely... It, well, if I you're going to have that, that criticism, tell him that and make it the point of it. When they had talked about you being a little bit more dynamic, again, it was more of an afterthought. Like, hey, well, you could have been a little more dynamic, but we get it. You know, you're singing in your yard at night to yeah. nobody. Um, and it's hard to kind of bring that out. And not taking anything away from Francisco had a killer performance. His performance was amazing. Amazing. A and every one of his was. I mean, he is, I'm so proud of him. And this. And I, he's one of my really close friends, you and know. And this is the exact point. They didn't need, or Katie didn't need to throw you that kind of shade. Because Francisco's performance stood on its own. Yeah. It didn't There was need no that. reason. There was no reason to that. do that. That's the moment I knew you were done. Yeah, I mean, me yep. too. You know, I mean, it was, it was kind of tying up, coming full circle, tying up that narrative. And, and it's a TV show. I cannot, like, the opportunity that I received, the lessons I received, the growth that I was at the amount I was able to grow, not just as a person, but I mean, not just as an artist, but as a, as a human, as a, as an individual was invaluable and priceless. But yeah, I mean, it was the end of the road and you it know, was. we were okay with that. You know, it was a little, it stung a little bit in the way no that, one wants to lose in no. And it, it definitely stung with the way that Katie said that. I think it was a little bit, you know, I mean, I could have done better with my performance. That's not on anyone else, but it was the way she said it was like, it was it was trying it was kind of 
coming to an end with that narrative, steering it back around um, with me and Francisco. And we kind of knew, we definitely knew it was going to happen at some point, yeah. you know. It um, had to happen. It had to happen. Right? It, really for, it is TV. But that's when we go back to what I said in some of the earlier parts of this story where things, there are certain moments that are definitely manufactured. That felt manufactured to me. And and, and it, it, it did. And, you know, it probably was. And you, But... We knew what we were getting yep. into, you know? I mean, Idol w- has been incredible. They are incredible. It's a TV show, yep. you know? They have ratings. They, I mean, it's just a TV show. So that was kind of... We, we knew that that was kind of happening. And, you know, we... I Yeah, I mean, that next morning, we were like, yeah, it's, it's done. Yep. It felt weird. It, it did felt, feel it, strange. It felt really weird because we had done... We literally worked 12 to 14 hours a day. We worked 12 to 14 hours a day Seven days a week for yeah. like six and a half weeks. It was crazy. It was crazy insane. Busy. I was quite relieved in a sense, yep. and I think I you were too. I definitely. It was like I wanted to knew, see my we, family. We again. knew <laughs> you had been literally living at my house. You hadn't yep. spent any time with your kids, and it needed to end at some point. Yep. And you know, I got to the semi-final of American Idol. I could have. I did more than I could have ever possibly hoped for, and I could have learned. I mean, more more than I could have ever possibly hoped to learn. And I mean, it was just the most incredible experience. And I was fine with it ending. It was going to end at some point. Would you, so as we kind of close this part of the story out, would you do it again? Would I go back and do Idol? No, not not audition. You can't because what you make the violence you can't. But just in your mind, was this all worth it? This was all worth it. I mean, it's that's an, I mean, I'm not even doing it. I'm doing it a disservice just saying it was all worth it. I, I'm i a different person. You know, I'm still the same Louis, but I've finally been able to find some confidence in myself and not just self-detrimental talk. Right. Um, and I, I've i grown as, as an artist. I know my sound more. I know I know how to work with people in the industry. You know, I, I know how to collaborate better. I know I'm more professional I learned so much about myself as just, and I keep, always say the word human because I think I think it's Dylan. It's it's Dylan in the back of my mind, the spiritual cowboy. He's like Namaste, my like my fellow humans, you know. And he was such a light during the entire process. Dylan, who congratulations, just signed a record deal. I cannot wait to hear the music. But yeah, I mean, I grew so much as a person, learned so much about myself, just going through the extreme highs and the extreme extreme lows. And you know that's life, and it was all a boot camp, and I would I would redo it over a million times because now I'm ready to go forward, and to I mean now that now the real work begins, and I mean it's been real work, but now it's just I'm I'm ready to to keep pursuing my career, and to take everything that I've learned and to try to take as much of it as I can to go forward and and into into my adulthood um into my adult life and my career so to that we say thank you american idol really like and, yeah. and even Massive all of our thank you to all american of our criticisms idol. aside like i couldn't agree more i think no, I mean, like, I, even absolutely. for us we there, it, it was all in all there weren't that experience. many criticisms honestly no. i mean everyone on the show i've said profusely just incredible incredible people in in their professional in their jobs and as people and you know i can't i can't thank everyone enough the contestants we all became a family the the team the production team we all became a massive family and i'm so lucky to be a part of the american idol family a year ago just being saying that now is just absolutely diabolical i'm a part of the american idol family and you know go after your dreams because this has completely changed my life and it can change yours. Just take that leap. There are going to be highs and there are going to be low lows. But, you know, you never know what doors will open if you just s- persevere. I mean, that's the biggest key that I learned. Yep. And temp- temper expectations. Know that it's a TV temper show. Some, so some of that's going to play out. You know, but at the end of the day, who you meet, learning the business, you know, being exposed to all this stuff. It really was immensely positive. And be yourself. Try to be as, as just... Genuine. In, I mean, and this is just in life. In in life, I mean, just be genuine. Be yourself. It's so hard to be swayed into what people think you ought to be, or what you what you think people would like you to be, what you think the world wants to see on television. Just be yourself. Be true to who you are, and just 
because it will come across and that goes a long long way it really does and i mean we we learned that you know and we've made friends for life from this show and i'm so lucky to have been a part of it well thank you louis for joining us and telling us your story this has been really fun for us like being able to talk about this and look forward to a lot more so thank you both um and thank you everyone for watching love you guys and we're out